job of is, you know, blocking on those on that outside. When they throw those bubble screens, whoever is the other receiver on that side is really good at just pushing their man, getting him out of the equation right. for it to truly be a 1v1 on that edge. Yes, and it's, it's like you said, that's kind of a, a crucial part to that too because, you know, your cornerbacks for them, they'll start seeing it, getting used to it. Um, maybe start getting a little bit more physical when they see those things. But uh, this call here looks like we had a little bit of yellow on the play, so that will bring the Lions back. Um, looks like now we're going to be facing a first and 15. Is that a false start? I believe. Well, I didn't with, see it. With the play not being blown dead, i got to imagine it's maybe more holding, especially being on the edge. Cooks is going to fake the handoff. Sets back to pass. Finds Brayson Carter again. This gets about three yards there on the catch, kind of a little scat route there. Um, so you'll take it, but now Lions back to that, um, you know, 10-yard line marker with a second down coming up. I'm trying to see who was on the outside going on the green go there. Number three, I'm not seeing the number three for us. Three is uh, Corey. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was saying. I was what used I was to being 23, and he, right. he changed numbers this year. Oh, the only reason I was saying is Corey kind of had a one-on-one -on -one go right there. I think it was a really good read by uh, – by Cooksey to just give the give what the defense gives them and wait for that big right. strike. And that one's going to be a false start right there. Um, we'll see if we get a number there, but um, it's going to back the Lions up five yards um, again. So now we'll be looking at a, a second and 15. God, I looked at the clock and we have five minutes left. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it goes by fast, man. And like I said when, before the game, we were talking about those commandments to win to winning the game, but can't be shooting yourself in the foot that does not help your case when That's especially when you're down to a team that does nothing but run it down your throat right line's going to set up again take the same formation they had um, set up before with trips on the bottom of your screen here he's going to motion mikhail howe out on a flare um, looks like a little screen here it's knocked down uh, plays lately blown dead carter trying to get on it just in case it wasn't but blown dead um, good job by piedmont reading that blowing that up um, so now that'll bring up a, a third and long for your Lions. I didn't get to see the, in, the the entire start of the play, but if that ball wouldn't have been blocked, I think he would have had a lot of up. I think he had a lot of green grass yeah, uh, look, to try and make some. It was a really lucky grab there by the Piedmont defender. Yeah, Lions there running a, a little screen there to um, Cork, and if he caught it, you got to imagine you could maybe get some yards, get in space, and if you make a guy or two miss, you can really break for long. But i um, got to imagine a situation like this. It's going to be passed. As you can see, um, five wide with trips on the bottom of your screen. Cooksey assessing the situation. He's going to set back in the pocket. And I believe we'll have time out. a – Got a timeout. to be that way. All right. We got our first timeout of the game going Blanchard's way. We are going to take a quick one-minute break, and we'll be right back. You are listening to Blanchard Lions football on Classic Rock 104.5. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. For more than 100 years, Oklahoma Career Tech has been training skilled and dedicated individuals, giving clear career paths to over 90,000 graduates a year. These individuals are the heartbeat of the Oklahoma workforce, serving thousands of companies, fueling this state's economy. Oklahoma is powered by Career Tech. back here to Piedmont America where the Blanchard Lions are currently down 7-0 to the Piedmont Wildcats with about five minutes left here in the first. Carson, uh, Blanchard needs to start uh, stop shooting themselves in the foot and get something going here on offense. What say you? And knock on wood. <laughs> speak of the devil right there. Uh, got a false start on top of our screen. Um, I believe it will be Terrence Johnson. Um, that's really tough coming out of timeout too. You hate doing that. So third and long, going to be third and longer now. Um, but, yeah, no, it's it, it's kind of discouraging because you really – we were making good progress before we started shooting ourselves in the foot. We were, um, you know, kind of around midfield, and now we're back kind of on, on Piedmont's end of the field. Um, Lions going to keep saying that five set. Cooks, he takes a snap, drives back, looking to his right side. He's going to scramble out, getting a little pressure on the edge. He's going to throw downfield to Brayson. 
And that's going to bring up lines just a little short. Um, we'll see if they decide to punt or kind of test the water and maybe try to convert here. It's looking that they'll try to go for it um, with the offense staying out there. I like it. One of the most underrated things that I think that Cooksey has in that skill set is being able to evade those tackles in the pocket and being able to throw while on the move. It's a perfect example of that right there, finding Brayson late in the snap. Right. Hudson Perryman's going to shuffle over to the left side. Uh, but still in a five wide set. Cooksey looking over sidelines, confirming the call that he's got in. Um, six seconds left on the snap clock. And kind of right now, uh, Lions get a first down. First down brought to you by, by First United Bank, but I believe it's going to get called back. This is a white hat in the backfield. It's got some yellow he threw down. Coach Craig seems to be, I don't know if he's mad at the official or one of the players. Is Looks that like a player. They got a holding on the Lions. Man. He's going to bring back a fourth down and a little bit longer, so this might – you know, with Piedmont, I, it, it's tough. I don't know if kind of the thought process here is you're just scared about him milking even more clock than what they normally would. Right. If you're thinking if you need to punt or if it's we've got to score to, to keep it a ball game. Right. I think uh, I think Blanchard's going to like to punt here just because I think they like their chances of them going, you know, 80 yards to try and score rather than where they started that in the very first drive with 40. And we uh, hadn't seen the Lions punt from last game, so I don't know if we'll get kind of a little rollout um, punt here from Cooksey or if they'll try to go for it. Um, play is blown dead before the snap. There's some movement on 60, kind of jump for Piedmont. Um, so they did get him. Uh, looks like we're going to get an offsides call on Piedmont. So that will move us up about five more yards. Um, so given that we did a hard snap there and got him off, I got to imagine that we might kind of gamble here and go for a fourth down. This might be uh, one of the oddest <laughs> drives we've seen thus far this season. I know we're very early, but a lot of, a lot of penalties going both ways, a lot of weird plays. Not too, too much to go off of. And I think we got a timeout on a uh, timeout. Piedmont. You know, we were trying to jinx. Uh, we were trying to jinx this, you know, fast game, and now here we are in the, just the second drive of the game, and it feels like we've been here for ten minutes. But that's okay. We're going to take a quick one-minute break. We'll be right back with the action here. You are listening to Blanchard Lions football on 104.5 Classic Rock. time for your school or business to purchase a new phone system? Give the experts at Versatile Networks a call. In most cases, we can provide a phone system with brand new phones for less than your current Welcome back. We are here, me, Drake Vitito, Carson Craig on uh, the play-by-play -play duties. Uh, Lions are up 7-0. Uh, Lions currently have it at a fourth and nine, Carson. Yeah, uh, Hudson's going to motion back over. Lions kind of assessing what Piedmont's throwing at him here out of the timeout. Um, sets back. Looks like we're going to get a quick punt off here from Cooksey. Um, getting kind of a, a Blanchard bounce there. I bet. It's going to roll out. Looks to be at um, the Piedmont's 17 yard line. 17? All right. I think, you know, if you'd be talking to the coaches and players, this is truly the first benchmark. That that first one obviously was a big turnover. Um, just a little bit of a fumble there on the kickoff. But this is the first true test, I think, for this Blanchard defense. They have to go the length of the field, basically. Right. Can you get a stop? Well, you know, everybody knows the saying, everybody's got a plan until you get punched in the face. So that's right. kind of probably what yeah. our player, players are experiencing right now, coming off the, you know, the high they had last week of, of, of Noble in that matchup. And now you've got a really good team at Piedmont um, that's throwing, throwing a lot of things at you, being physical with you. And it's now you gotta you got to go out there and battle from behind. 
Piedmont's going to have two receivers at the bottom of your screen here. It's like a little handoff, kind of, I would say, it's, I, I guess as close as you get to a sweep for a flex bone that's not a motion right. across. <laughs> right, yeah. Not exact dive, but uh, running back there might have made just a little read and bounce it off to the edge. But um, Lions, for the most part, still staying disciplined, but it's just so hard. You see right there, um, just kind of four, four yards off that little play right there. And I think we need to – we can't really understate this. Piedmont is a very, very good football team. The triple option is a bit archaic to some, <laughs> but they run it really, really, really well, and they're really good in 5A. Uh, yeah, like you were saying, in 5A, I think um, saw something the other day. Great job holding the edge there. Nice. Um, looks like that might have been Gage Ellison um, staying engaged with his defender. Um, or maybe it's Cork. I'm trying. I'm having a hard time seeing if it's it – Yeah, eight, that was Cork. Number number uh, no, yep, you're right. That was Tyler, Tyler Hughes, Hughes, actually. Coming a great great For job, kind of scraping across. Good coverage um, distance, too. Forcing tracking. that bounce out, right. I will say um, – Given, you know, the season so far, there has not been no bad jerseys yet. Sometimes you get those jerseys that you can't see any of the numbers, <laughs> uh, especially if you get it in, like, the right tint of light. Thankfully, the Blanchard Lions don't have those kind of jerseys. I think <laughs> I think it'll be better for us once the sun sets. Right. Um, cause, a little yeah, bit right glare. here at the back, they're kind of in the shadows. Uh, Piedmont doing a quick dive here. Um, the ideal situation here right for Blanchard, getting a quick stop there on that third down. It's going to bring up fourth and eight. Uh, That's big. Lions are bringing out some substitutions, so I think they're anticipating Piedmont's upon it. Um, like I said, if you can hold them to about five or six yards under, yep. um, especially on, on this end of the field too, um, I, I got to anticipate Piedmont would, would punt it, um, keep trusting that their defense is going to uh, play like they did on that last year, is kind of right. holding us and, and making us execute because we so far haven't done our best job of that. Mm-hmm. Really good positioning here for the Lions if this punt doesn't get it under. Brace is going to signal for a fair catch there. Caught there, looks to be at the 49-yard line. So a little bit better positioning for Lions coming back out on offense. Um, you know, this is kind of that part of the field I was talking about where we where we got to, you know, making good progress when right. further back, and then you have penalties and all that and almost scoot you back to, to where you started from. So. Hopefully on this one we can make that same progress minus those mistakes. And honestly, I mean, if you take out those penalty plays, they were moving the ball with ease. Right. I mean, Piedmont's defense hasn't really been showing anything otherworldly. And I'm sure once that, you know, that was our first drive against them, I'm sure once they got some of their defensive kids over there, if they're not going both ways, kind of discussing some things of, of how to play and how to adjust to what they're seeing from our offense. Cooks is going to hand off to Mikhail. He's going to go up the middle. Looks to be about maybe three, four yards for um, you know, a little squad of Piedmont defenders there to tackle him. And I'm telling you, anything you can get on the ground, if you can establish any sort of identity on the run game, especially in this game, uh, I think it's going to pay huge dividends in the end for when they take that eventual big shot. Yes, and it's, it's you know, also, too, with being an early game on, you're wanting your kids to see things because um, ultimately this, this game is going to matter, but not in a win-loss, uh, right. you know, uh, record as, as far as – I um, mean, outside of what, Bethany, Newcastle, Tuttle? I mean, I mean Piedmont's probably one you circle. Right. Uh, when it comes to competition. Well, I know you talked about it on the coaching show. It's kind of that 5A schedule. Uh, Piedmont, I think I saw when we were talking. Cooks is going to drop back, throw a deep one. I believe that's to Corey. It kind of stumbles there. Uh, a couple Blanchard fans, not the happiest with no yellow on the play. But I think it might have been a little bit of an uncatchable ball maybe. Is that the reason why you keep the flag in there? Well, or? I, I didn't catch up to it fast enough. I didn't see yeah. how much contact was going on, if it was beyond what's, you know, a, allowable. you got to allow the defender right. to have a chance to make a play. Um, I'll be honest, though. There, that was about triple coverage right there, and I still <laughs> think Carson put it in at the exact spot that only Cork would be able and to get it if he was going to be able to get to the ball. And Cork looked like he had got past those defenders, so yeah. um, it is – that was probably something like you were mentioning earlier where you've got your run game setting up um, those things to take those big shots later on. And you've got you got a quarterback like Cooksey and receivers like Corrick and, and Reagan. Who's out tonight? But that you can right. throw that deep ball to. Um, as lines are Looks like we got a – is this a Blanchard timeout? Looks like we uh, have a – We have a Blanchard timeout. It is currently 7 nothing Piedmont here late in the first quarter heading into the second. We're going to take a short break, one-minute break here. We will be back with the action 
Uh, my name is Drake Vito. That's Carson Craig. You're listening to Blanchard Lions Football on 104.5 Classic Rock. Oklahoma's number one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. At Maples Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do. But it- Welcome back. We are here late in the first quarter. Piedmont is currently up on Blanchard 7. Carson, but Blanchard has the ball, and they're looking to uh, march up field to uh, react to that first early score by Piedmont. Yep, they got a uh, back to kind of a wide, uh, five wide set. Um, trips at the top of your screen. Cooks is going to drop back, surveying the field, stepping up, keeps getting. Piedmont's done a, a, a good job of really challenging our pocket tonight. Um, about two or three other times, Cookies, Cooks has had to scramble out, and he's done a great job of, of avoiding that. But um, right there, number 60 for Piedmont. Let's see, um, Talon Owen um, wrangles down Cooksey in the backfield. Yeah, you got to give – I mean, he's been doing great. Cooksey has all game long of being able to escape that presence. But sadly, he does not have eyes in the back of his head, and sadly that is where the tackle came from. Well, yeah, and, and they got athletes too, so. Right, correct. Lions. Piedmont looks to be anticipating just a quick little punt from Cooksey here. Um, so they got a man kind of deep towards the back of the 20 yard line. Uh, Blanchard motions. That's an out. Looks like they're gonna they're gonna take a shot at it. And tipped. It uh, looks to be tipped by number 25 of Piedmont. Um, so great job by them anticipating having players in position for either or play there. We just like to give a quick shout out to today's game sponsor. I guess it's tonight now. Uh, Casa de Wolf Designs is tonight's title sponsor for tonight's game. We'd also give a couple shout outs to some of the sponsors for tonight. Quick Wrench, Keeler Custom Homes, and 10 Arrows Roofing. It's the end of the first quarter. It's Piedmont 7, Blanchard nothing. We are going to take a quick one minute break here and we will get back to you with the action. My name is Drake, that is Carson. You are listening to Blanchard Lions Football right here on Classic Rock 104.5. The AMG team is based in Oklahoma City and delivers your organization revenue enhancement through a combination of data science, innovative marketing, and business automation. We think like owners and behave as long-term partners. Delivering measurable results for nearly 20 years has made the AMG team known for our ability to efficiently and effectively execute objectives. We are ready to help raise your organization to a higher level of success. So visit us today at theamgteam.com. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst. Welcome back. We are in the start of the second quarter here in Piedmont, America. Piedmont currently leads Blanchard 7 to nothing. Uh, my 2 deep actually just came flying through because of the wind into the Piedmont stand, so we are currently looking at retrieving that. Thank you so much. You are awesome. Um, I was really worried there for a sec. I, I, I know mostly everyone on this Blanchard lineup, but I'm not too familiar yet with just look, being able to look at their, uh, their faces covered by the masks. Piedmont looks to be a little toss sweep there on the left. Um, looks like they toss that over to. Sorry, and I'm, I'm having a hard time with the numbers. I wouldn't think with the with the whites, but. Um, I mean, honestly, with you know, it's seven nothing ball game. That seven came from a a kick that you you muffed, and Piedmont was able to get on uh, in enemy territory. And they were only what thirty-five yards. They went about thirty-five yards for that score. Right. I gotta feel like as as a lion, you're you're okay. You're not okay with that turnover, but how the defense has responded, you're doing good. It's uh, encouraging and, and encouraging. Just look here, kind of out of that flex bone set. Piedmont's gonna get a first down. Um, you can see there, kind of doing that triple option. You can get out of that formation. Occasionally, quarterback kind of looking at the edge, making that read. 
um, decides to hold on to it, and he goes and gets about 12 yards off of it. So what I remember very clearly about last year's game against Piedmont was that the leading tacklers was Jackson Lamanac and Brayson Carter. That tells me that they were able to break the line um, multiple times. So I think that was the first true break that we've had into where the safeties were having to make a play. Yes. Uh, so that's a very encouraging sight. Not the play itself, but that it came so late in the game so far. Right. Yeah, it's it's tough because, um, like we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. when they when they kind of catch you on that and somebody might just be just, you know, hair off in the right position, that's going to give uh, Piedmont an advantage to go get some extra yardage. Got a flag here. Delay of game on Piedmont. That'll be a five yard penalty. It'll be first and fifteen. So I gotta say, I don't wanna I don't wanna quite be a homer here, but um, that fourth down play that the Lions initiated uh, right before the quarter ended, the clock was definitely past zero and there was no flag thrown. But we're not complaining. Unless they didn't reset. That's true. That's, that that's is a also potential, a possibility. But uh but yeah that that uh, Oh, it looks kind of Piedmont right there. Uh, number 14, uh, quarterback Joshua Mars kind of stumbles there. Um, kind of was trying to get out on the on the left edge there, and I don't know if Turf Monster got him or why. Hopefully he's. I think it might have been the Turf Monster. Yeah, hopefully no, you know, knee, ankle, anything like that. Got to give a quick shout out to Kate Saunders, Blake Woods, and Ross Johnson. That that front three for Blanchard so far tonight has been really outstanding. Only about one or two plays you could point to where they haven't really kept contain, uh, but so far it's been nothing but stars in my mind. <laughs> and it's kind of been interesting. There hasn't, you know, there's been a little bit of stuff on the edge, not too too much. They're still, you know, they're fine with um, doing a dive. And here's one of those big plays as they uh, run a little bit of play action there. Oh, little. Blindside block it should be a blindside block. I, yeah, I kind of—I'll be honest. I most oftentimes hate that call in football, so I, I'm kind of glad that they—it wasn't egregious enough. If you're to not, call if you're it, not going to call think. it, and it happens again, stay consistent. It was oh, still. Coach Craig is on the field, probably a little bit past the 20-yard mark. <laughs> he is not happy with the call. I can't tell if it's officials or a player because it's a big play on that um, or something. Oh, no, he's chirping at um, oh, sideline judge and there. The sideline so. judge is uh, giving a little bit back. Pointing, a, pointing to the other side, so I, I do believe that blindside uh, block is what Coach Craig is upset for here. Piedmont's going to dive up the middle there, just kind of gash you for another four or five yards. Flag comes in after the play. Uh, play goes by so <laughs> so flat. It goes, you know, it goes by so fast, and you can't tell if it's a hold or right. It's just a bang bang play. It just happens so quickly. I think this might be on Piedmont. Well, I wonder too if you could even get like a block below the knees with it being so kind of in the trenches there. Mm -hmm. Now it's really hard to tell because we're in that weird spot in the day where the sun hasn't completely gone down, but it's not completely dark yet, so the lights in right. the stadium aren't really doing anything. So when the refs make a motion, it's kind of hard to see. Chop block? <laughs> Chop yep. block. Chop block. Yeah, so that's... My know, eyes with, don't fail me. <laughs> so with it, you know, being so much there in the middle of it, all it takes is just if one of their players kind of goes below the knees, that gives them advantage because as a defender, you got to immediately put your hands on that on that offensive lineman and then you can't, you can't make any plays with your arms or anything like that. It's a big blessing here for the Blanchard defense. It'll be interesting to see if uh, Piedmont mixes in a pass play being down so many yardage. Yeah, I, I think for now they'll stay away from it since they just did a play action. Um, kind of one of those you want to keep in the, in the back of your pocket. There might be something defensively that they'll see alignment wise with the Lions that They'll jump on to, hey, switch it over to, you know, play action and let's, let's test the air. I could be wrong. Um, but if memory serves me correctly, I think last year Piedmont actually attempted a couple of field goals from long, from distance. Um, yeah. I, I could be wrong, but I, for some reason I remember Piedmont going for a couple of threes. You know, I was kind of trying to just do a little little bit of quick research on, on them before the game, kind of looking through Twitter. And I want to say I did see a clip of, of them kicking um, field goals, not from last week's contest with El Reno, but uh -huh. I think the uh, whoever they're – playing the week before so they're capable uh it might have been on noble i want i want to say i saw like a you know the kicker kind of posted some highlights and say eight for eight and i don't i, I got it was a huddle that was probably, huh? well it's on twitter <laughs> it's like a sideline camera thing, so yeah you know, i think i think eight for eight i'm gonna guess some of those were uh, you know 
PATs, but it was a field goal that one clip you put on there and made it. I think it was kind of – they were at maybe like the 25-yard line or so. So okay. about 35-yard field goal. So we might, might have that quickly potential. here. Uh, we'll take we'll take three points over over seven, but it looks like Piedmont's not going to have to worry about it as they run that triple option. Quarterback decides to pitch to the edge, and Piedmont's going to attack on another six and potentially seven points here. That was tough. It was a little bit of a mixed direction, and the edge was sealed. And I think the only person in the uh, immediate airspace was the, that linebacker right there. Who is who is that? Tyler Hughes. He was just. It ended up being too many bodies on one, and he was able to create space for himself. It's uh, it's kind of the same. It's dressed up a different way with the triple option, kind of how we have our our bubble, where you're trying to get your guys on the edge and one on one, and that's so hard there because your linebackers, you know, got to really commit to that quarterback coming down, right. force the pitch, and he's got to rely on his other guys to rally up and, and be in that spot. And Piedmont, uh, you know, just beat us there on, on that right side and back on another seven, 14-0. Lions are in a hole here with about eight minutes to go left in the second quarter. It is Piedmont 14, Blanchard zero. We are going to take a quick one-minute break, and we're going to be right here back on the action. You're listening to Classic Rock 104.5. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. For more than 100 years, Oklahoma Career Tech has been training skilled and dedicated individuals, giving clear career paths to over 90,000 graduates a year. These individuals are the heartbeat of the Oklahoma workforce, serving thousands of companies, fueling this state's economy. Oklahoma is powered by Career Tech. Welcome back. It is, I don't know, about 7.45 here left in the first half for Blanchard. They are quickly in a hole 14 to nothing. They have the ball. Try Carson, I think that's a pretty good turn. start to uh, jumpstart the comeback, eh? Yeah, Korg, um, you know, taking kickoff uh, return duties there. Um, don't remember last week. He might have been replacing Reagan um, in that. Um, returning spot but yeah it gets a good return there puts us at about the it looks to be a 42 yard line um, on our side of the field so we're going to drive try to get into Piedmont's um, territory. We're really in an interesting situation right here Carson because this is very much similar to what happened last year 14-0 hole it's just really hard to come back with that style of offense that Piedmont runs. Right and they've been doing a great job of, of testing us on offense um, you know we've been executing some here and there but just ultimately not not to the level that we need to be uh, you see there Piedmont gets a great stop um, wraps up running back there in the Look to be yeah, Mikael Howe out there on the handoff, just swarm there by Piedmont defender. So uh, I still, backs I mean, us I still, up a little bit. I like the game plan. I really do. I mean, you still, no matter how much you're down, you do have to establish that run just so you can set your own, set yourself up for success down the line when you uh, decidedly take that. Because right now, Piedmont's defense has given nothing to those receivers. Right, and it's stuff you can use late, you know, your film review, your practice. It's stuff that you can see where you know where you're at um, to work when you get finally into district play and you are playing the, the, the important matchups there with it that you're executing um, to the degree you need to be. Cooksey's going to drop back, drop back, just kind of dump, dump off pass here. I believe Vaughn McIntyre, number 14, um, he's going to make a little bit of his way upfield. Gets a little bit closer to that first down marker. Just a little up. Uh, I see the sticks moving. Oh. Okay. Oh, that was a so generous a, spotting, I think. But we will take it. That, you said Vaughn McIntyre on that one? Yes. I, I didn't know the McIntyres were brothers. <laughs> I didn't, didn't – Cade. I feel I feel like Cade – we said Cade, Cade's name quite a lot there in the, the back half of the Noble game last week. Yeah, this first down brought to you by First United Bank. Lions are going to set up again, kind of – Looking at the little bit of read option again. Um, Cooksey fakes that handoff and goes and gets about eight yards there on, on the quarterback run. Um, so that's kind of back to we're 
Blanchard's offense, kind of this expanded form of a triple option, if yeah. you would, where Cooksey does right have that too. option to get the, the bubble. So Blanchard going tempo. This time he will hand it off. Um, Piedmont's there to make the play, blows it up in the middle. Um, Going to keep us short of, a, of another first down. Um, Lions will regroup here and, and see what they can do on this upcoming third down. I think Cooksey is pretty interesting in the equation of establishing that run game. Oh. We <laughs> Oh. Spoke, spoke too soon. There's another, another first, <laughs> bang, first down. I, uh, he got blown up hard enough that I thought I thought they were going to mark us wow. short, but he must have had a, you know, your ball carrier progress be far enough for it. So we'll take it. No we're complaints on our end. We, we heard a little bit of dissatisfaction say, down here. We're currently on the Piedmont <laughs> side, and there were a couple fans not happy about that call. Lions go back to a four-wide set here. Uh, Cooksey, another fake handoff here. And, and like I said, just that that bubble option there wasn't the cleanest. A um, little bit throw of an extended there. toss almost. <laughs> yeah, it, I, I, it kind of looked like it bounced there for a second and embraced and wrangled it back in and, and used the speed, kind of get a couple more yards on it. Not a terrible play. I think if Brayson doesn't ball with that, you're able to maybe even get closer to a first down it's, in that spot. It's always an interesting one because it's, uh, you know, it can sometimes be a hard throw for your quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, depending on his on his handiness. And that's if the read side. is right. I mean, I th right. it, look, it almost looks like he was about to break open there. And being on the shorter side, too, it, it can be a little bit harder with it. Um, they're going to go back. They're just going to dump it off. Quick bubble. Um, here again, too. Is that taunting? Whoa. Taunting, yes. A little bit of a yeah, extracurricular. And the flag go. is thrown. I was about to say, man. So it's one of those football fields where the track is extended on the football field. And... Number 10 for Piedmont pushed Taunting all the way out to where the cheerleaders are in the middle of the track. I think it's a good call there by the official. It gets a little dangerous when you uh, <laughs> escape the turf and now you're on, what would that even be called? I don't even know what a track is made out of. Asphalt? <laughs> I was about to I say asphalt too. Uh, yes. I'm like, I, I, Colored? I, it's got to be a different term for it. This is so <laughs> bad. I only ran track for about six years. I can't <laughs> tell you what I was running on for those six years. Yeah. Yeah, they they got a nice uh, track around. It looks I'm kind of looking down here at the numbers. Either like a uh, kind of looks like an eight lane track. Yeah, and what you see right now from the Piedmont coaching staff after that call is they weren't really disputing it. So I I think this might be more of a teaching lesson more than an incorrect call. Well, and it's kind of uh, the first kind of penalty you've really seen other than that offsides earlier on the on the Piedmont defense. They're just, that's kind of one of those, being smart, being knowing where you are on the field and, and when the play's dead. And, you know, as you know, the scoreboard right now indicates, you know, a shutout. But, honestly, this Piedmont defense has been having their own flaws. I mean, there's been some penalties called against them. They've had a couple offsides. They had the late hit right there. I mean, Blanchard's getting free opportunities. It's just – Blanchard's, on Blanchard's been exploiting some things that they're giving us, but um, it's they've so far done a good job of bend not break kind of philosophy for for Piedmont here. Cooksey's going to set up. We got trips to the top of our screen. Um, it's kind of another little fake handoff here. Got to pass it out to Corey Pierce on the edge. Um, you know, it's that's kind of your last option where you go through your progressions. Um, Piedmont had all our other receivers covered as far as what Cooksey was seeing, so. Hey, just dump it off to your guy, go get a couple yards. And uh, good job by our, our front there by, by keeping a pocket, yeah. giving Cooksey enough time to go through those progressions. Yeah, and good job by Cork there. He, he he initiated contact right there at about, oh, I don't know, a couple yards into that down, that pass down marker, and he was able to tag on a couple just by working right. through that tackle, leaning forward. So Lyon's going to go back to a tight end set here. Carter's going to motion across back to the left side, bring us a double set down there. Hudson's going to motion to the left side as well. Uh, Lyon's going to hand it off to Vaughn. He's going to – Vaughn McIntyre, he's going to run up the middle, um, get us a couple yards. I believe that's going to bring up a fourth and short. Uh, being on this end of the field, you're definitely going to go for it. Uh, we'll see here if it's Lyon's big, still – a big, big play. There's about four minutes left here in the second quarter. This yeah, could be a potential momentum swinger here for the Lions if they're able to convert. Lions going to go back to the same formation they had on that last third down play. Uh, Hudson's still on the right as a tight end. Um, he's going to motion cross again, so they might ride Vaughn and then Cooksey. A little bit of a read. Piedmont rallies up to it well, was expecting it. Uh, Lions just you know, probably saw something that they wanted to take advantage of there, and, and, and Piedmont tricked him. 
Yeah, I got to give credit to the D line of Piedmont or the blitz that they brought. It was just they were able to get in the backfield quicker than the play was able to progress to a right. level for Cooksey, and he had to make a bang bang play. Just ended up being a little short on the pass. Yeah, and like we said earlier, kind of that bid not break. They've been giving us stuff that we've been taking advantage of and, and progressing down the field, but we just can't seem to crack that that white line on their um, you know on their end zone. While we're waiting for Piedmont to initiate their first play on this drive, just want to give a quick shout out to Casa de Wolf Designs. They are the title sponsor for this game. Uh, big big thank you to Casa de Wolf Designs for being tonight's title sponsor for this game. Piedmont back in there. Side of the field, going to go back to the flex bone. Quarterback's going to fake the handoff, take it up to the edge. Looks like he'll get about four to five yards here. Actually, put him at seven yards. And you know, the one thing we really haven't talked about yet, and I think it's really appropriate since we're heading toward the end of the first half here, is the longer Piedmont stays on the field, you have to start thinking about that stamina game for that defense just being on the field for so long. Oh, yeah, no, no, definitely. Like you're saying, it's – a stamina thing. You also got to factor in for for us. We've got a lot of players that are, are going both sides of the ball. So really trying to balance um, stopping them, um, matching their physicality, and not and not wearing down. But it's just physically and mentally, it's just so tough when you know a guy's probably going to run to you two yards um, once this ball snaps. So you got to be there and wrap him up. Lions rally up here. Looks to be tackled by 62, I believe. Is that Blake Woods? It is. That is big Blake Woods. Blake They're Woods. on the tackle. Good, uh, good job there for them getting uh, – kind of shooting that edge a little bit before anything was able to happen. Yeah, staying responsible, being where you need to be, and then rally once you see where the ball is. It's so tough when you got all, all kinds of stuff going on in the backfield as far as um, you want to stay focused and read where your, your eyes need to be and not get caught up on watching the quarterback or the running back if that's not where your eyes need to be. And really, it's, it's one of those things where Blanchard's tackling has been very good tonight. I mean, it's just you have to take into account Piedmont's system they've been doing it for whoever knows how many years. They're just they're masters of the craft at it. Oh, so yeah, sometimes yeah, you can do all the right things, and it's just it's just a better play by the offense. Right. Two years that we played um, Coach Hall's squad here in Piedmont, um, just running that offense. and um, Got a little bit of a break with the penalty called there. Um, they're going to take it up the field. But even here, Piedmont's looking at it. It's not – they're not urgently needing to score on this no. drive before half, you right? You saw it down here on the first it's and 20. It was a dedicated three-run play. They just ended up right. breaking away on that third down. They're going to they're commit to it. They're going to you know, they're gonna try and keep executing, but at the same time, it's, hey, we got a flag. We got backed up 10 yards here. We're going to keep milking this clock. Um, we'll get, you know, we can probably get another two plays out of this with being a second down and, and run off about 30 seconds on each of those. It's a chip away game, man, and they're really good at it. So Lions rally up there, um, holding really the middle of the field um, well there as they have this drive. I think that was Jake Carter on the tackle there. <laughs> I think he got past that first level and he was able to uh, snack up that running back before anything really got started. Yes, that was number 70, Jake Carter, the senior. Just a little uh, programming note, we will be bringing you the halftime scoreboard update uh, via Squirtle that we do every game presented by First United Bank and Mortgage. So we do have that to look forward to, seeing scores from around 4A and beyond. I was already taking a quick peek. There's some interesting ones. I'll be uh, curious to see where the updates, um, okay. if, if anybody's going to pull away. Piedmont's going to take out a timeout on this third and uh, 15, I believe. And I think we're going to take it with them. There's about a minute and four seconds left here in the second quarter. Piedmont currently leads Blanchard 14 to nothing. Piedmont has the ball going west. My name is Drake Vidito. That's Carson Craig. We will bring you the action back here in one minute. You are listening to Blanchard Lions football on 104.5 Classic Rock. time for your school or business to purchase a new phone system? Give the experts at Versatile Networks a call. In most cases, we can provide a phone system with brand new phones for less than your current monthly bill. Call us for a free quote today.
Welcome back. We are about a minute and four seconds here from halftime. Piedmont currently leading Blanchard 14 0. Carson, let's see if Piedmont can uh, scrounge something up here with a minute and four seconds <laughs> I left. Think, I think they're going to stay on the ground and uh, keep, you know, right here, rally them down. It's fourth down. I got to anticipate a punt here on their end, but what they're going to do is, um, you know, the snap clock starts at 40. Um, we're down to 30 seconds and about 49 on the game clock. So they're going to run that all the way down. They might even just take a timeout right before it goes off. Yeah. Get their punt team out there, punt it off. You know what's funny is, you know, we Pete, give give credit to Piedmont's defense. They've they've done an okay job so far uh, with containing the Lions' uh, offensive yard yardage game. But the Lions last year, I could count many times big plays that led to big touchdowns in very short amounts of time. Yeah, that's that's kind of what you're ultimately hoping for tonight. Uh, Piedmont trying to see if they can get us to jump off sides before burning that timeout. Um, Lions do a good job staying disciplined, not jumping off, and Piedmont's going to take timeout. And we are not going to there. take it with them. Um, we are kind of we are so close to home here in the first half, about 17 seconds left to go. Uh, while we're in this break, I just want to give a quick shout out to some of our sponsors: Craig and Straight Orthodontics, Setterfield Surveying, Coops Performance Gym, Blanchard Eye Care. Big special thank you to Casa de Wolf Designs for being the title sponsor for tonight's game here against Piedmont. Hometown Healthcare, we gave you that injury report pre-game. Um, and then the LB Realty Group, we kind of got to start thinking about the player of the game who's maybe set themselves apart from the pack. We have Brightway Insurance. We introduced the starting lineup uh, before the game, and that is brought to you by Brightway Insurance. Yarbrough and Sons, big shout-out to them. They're the touchdown sponsor. Haven't gotten one yet, but I feel like uh, some big's brewing up for the second half. And, of course, First United Bank, who we will be bringing to you and is the presenting sponsor for the halftime scoreboard update as well as the First United first down. We've seen a couple of those tonight. Yeah, I've got a – I'm holding out hope. You know, your, your lines are going to go into halftime. Coach Craig is uh, supporting staff. They're going to, you know, get with their kids, um, kind of review some things they're seeing, um, you know, up top here um, in the press box, um, just kind of reshoring up some things that they're seeing and maybe get that fixed and find the end zone in the second half. Grayson Carter is going to field the return. No fair catch, muff punt, but bounces back to him. He's going to take it up to the top of the screen on your right. Kind of a good look here, but I think they're, yep. Piedmont ultimately kind of rallies him down there on the edge. We got a flag thrown in. Is that I'm not another late hit? Well, it, I'm not sure if we're going to get like a horse collar face mask there on, on that brace and tackle or if they saw a block. It's been a pretty physical game thus far. Uh, uh, there have been a lot of plays that have not gotten car, that have not cards. I'm too. <laughs> I'm too. I'm ready for my Brighton team tomorrow to play in the Premier League, Carson. They right. haven't gotten yellow flags, um, but there's been a lot of you know a lot of pushing and shoving after after contact after uh, after tackling. But um, it's been a physical one, and um, I just hope we can get it kind of under wraps because it's been there's been a couple flags out there tonight that have been for extracurriculars. We're gonna wait here and see what we've got called in here. Personal foul on, on Piedmont. Piedmont. He was not specific in what sort of personal foul it was. I'm either saying late hit, face mask, collarbone. I, if it's a late hit, it had to be on somebody that was coming to horse collar and kind of lead, lead some blocking for Brayson. Um, you know, from from here, from far, kind of maybe one of those high arm tackles, or kind of around his, his neckline. And I don't, yeah, I don't know. You know, horse collar for. Um, most oftentimes, it's just kind of when the player gets pulled down from behind, um, with it being a, a you know a player safety concern. Um, I'm forgetting at the high school level if, if just any if your hand goes on inside of the collarbone on right. you know, any part of the pads if it gets called. Can't recall that right away. Uh, I can look into that at, a, at another time and see. Um, Lions are going to take the field here with six seconds. I'm not sure if they will try to take a deep shot. They've kind of got a quads look. First time I've this seen is this interesting. this year <laughs> with the five wide. So they might try this a little quick to get something. I think Cooksey's just going to run it, just get down, go to halftime. And that'll be it for your first half here in Piedmont between the Lions and the Piedmont Wildcats. Yeah, Carson, I mean, it was kind of an uneventful first half. Uh, for the Lions, what did you see in that first half? It may have been the tail of the tape so far in this it game. Was, it's what we expected coming in. Uh, Piedmont would be running that that flex mode offense that is is really 
really going to test you. It's good. It's good for us, kind of when coming into the season. You know, your your defense kind of lost some pieces, so you might have a question mark here or there, or maybe a maturity aspect of, hey, we know this guy's good, but uh, mentally, kind of what he's seeing uh, on the field. So, good test there, Piedmont. Um, really, I have, it, with their drives, it hasn't been anything that's been concerning to me where they are just really moving up the, the field in kind of a dominating fashion of just a first down, a first down, a first down. It's just been one big one big play for that first touchdown and also being, um, you know, that, that costly turnover in that first half that we had. Of course. So we're going to take a tiny six-minute break here heading into halftime. We have a 20-minute clock on the halftime. That clock will start once everyone is situated inside their respective locker rooms. Uh, if you're hearing us on the Squirtle stream uh, on the Blanchard website, you will probably be hearing uh, a rendition of what you heard on the home game last week against Noble. Uh, the Blanchard band has traveled here to Piedmont. They're going to do their performance, and then after their performance is done, we will come back and give you the first United Bank and Mortgage halftime scoreboard update. Going to give you some scores from around 4A and beyond. But as for right now, we're going to take about a seven-minute break. My name is Drake Vitito. That is Carson Craig. You are listening to Blanchard Lions football here on Classic Rock 104.5.
Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. For more than 100 years, Oklahoma Career Tech has been training skilled and dedicated individuals, giving clear career paths to over 90,000 graduates a year. These individuals are the heartbeat of the Oklahoma workforce, serving thousands of companies, fueling this state's economy. Oklahoma is powered by Career Tech. a new phone system? Give the experts at Versatile Networks a call. In most cases, we can provide a phone system with brand new phones for less than your current monthly bill. Call us for a free quote today. school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. At Maple's Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples, Nicks, and Diesel Horst, and we are here to help. The AMG team is based in Oklahoma City and delivers your organization revenue enhancement through a combination of data science, innovative marketing, and business automation. We think like owners and behave as long-term partners. Delivering measurable results for nearly 20 years has made the AMG team known for our ability to efficiently and effectively execute objectives. We are ready to help raise your organization to a higher level of success, so visit us today at theamgteam.com. Welcome back. We are currently about 10 minutes out till halftime. I am Drake Vitito. That is Carson Craig. Carson, we've gotten to uh, the point in the night where it's fall. <laughs> uh, it is, I don't know, I can't really, I'm not a, a, a meteorologist, but I would probably, probably somewhere around the 70, maybe mid 70s, maybe upper 70s right now. It feels very, very good. One thing we didn't even get really get to touch on during that game is Blanchard traveled very well, um, pretty much 100% coverage in the stands. You just saw the Blanchard uh, Lion Band do a great rendition of sort of a twisted, uh, what would you call it, a twisted night at the circus. Um, it's definitely getting to the uh, the Halloween the, the Halloween kind of feel moments yeah. uh, of the fall. I am an October birthday, so I'm very much wrapped into all of that. I have a great appreciation for you know the people that go out and do the weirder stuff. Um, that was definitely a little weird, and I enjoyed every single minute of it. Yeah, I, you know, I like Halloween and all the decorations after it, but I am cracking up when it's. It seems like every year for every holiday, everybody wants to start decorating a little bit earlier and earlier to beat beat people to the punch. That's so right. And I'm you like, know if what? I start seeing some decorations in September, I might be like, hey, okay, <laughs> that's right. To October. And first. you know, as far as the band stuff goes, you know, as as weird and as out there as you can get it, the more I'm going to be, you know, the more I'm going to be bought in. And so that performance was uh, pretty great, especially for considering the time and month we are closing into on October. But with that being said, uh, we've kept you in the dark long enough. Carson had a pretty, pretty interesting teaser leading up to this point. We are going to bring you the First United Bank and Mortgage halftime scoreboard update. First, we are going to hit 4A and then maybe some of the bigger 6A schools that maybe have some uh, weight and heft 
uh, yeah. that you may see on the news tonight. So, Carson, take it away. Yeah, thanks to our sponsor again for, for the scoreboard. Um, so we'll kick off the update, kind of looking at some teams that are uh, going to be in uh, Blanchard's district um, that we'll see later on. Um, starting off first with Hera. Um, is at Western Heights. They're leading 32-0. Scrolling down, looking at some other teams. Uh, Bethany is up on Woodward, uh, 23 to 14. Uh, really? Game there, yeah. I, is Woodward? Woodward, Woodward went is down to four. They're this year, five right? a currently. Okay. Now the if you saw some updated stuff, I yeah. do believe you're correct in that they're going to get bumped down to four a next year when the when the new um, cycle comes ADM out. ADM and all that comes. Honestly, redistricting. and I was kind of talking about this last week. Uh, there's the classification numbers of all the schools. I didn't even know they posted stuff like that. Yes. I just thought you I just thought you were like, hey, you're in the 4A group this year. I didn't know you get to do the specific, like, enrollment. Yes. And so um, I had no idea. And this is just really kind of blind on my part. But Blanchard's up in the very, I mean, upper echelon of – 4A. So honestly, this what may happen as the year goes on, we may turn this scoreboard up, update into like 4 and 5A, just because you know in the next couple of years, who know what's going to happen? The Blanchard yeah. might end up being with the ranks of Noble Piedmont and Shawnee. And they've already got our district for next year kind of lined out. We can I can Do see they? if I can find that later and okay. kind of pull up, see who we got. But Please. kind of going back to the scores, looks like uh, Newcastle is at home against Plainview. Um, all seven there at that game. Uh, continuing to look down, I am seeing Tuttle and Noble. Tuttle is up 28 to zero in the second okay. quarter. Uh, that game is at Noble. Uh, another score. This one looks maybe played this last night on a Thursday night. Class in SAS and South uh, Southeast. Class won that game 69-6. Oof. Um, other kind of some you know heavy hitters in, in 4A. Wagner's playing uh, 5A Tahlequah. Um, they're up 2013. I remember Drake, you kind of touched on that with Coach Craig when he was looking at scores last week. Impressed with Wagner uh, being up on Coweta, um, yeah. winning that game. Um, Cushing is trailing uh, number four Perkins Tryon 14 to seven at the half. Um, Very. That was another one of those teams. Cushing obviously um, Blanchard season ending. Uh, by the way of Cushing last year. Right. A lot of seniors on that Cushing team. I'm kind of intrigued if, if the Paz end up do crossing in, just what the kind of team they have. Yeah, it'll uh, – you know, they've they've had some success in recent years. you got to imagine they'll keep things going. But yeah. it, it always is tough to replace guys. So this, this could ultimately end up being to – kind of a, a, a rebuilding season but so far not looking that way for Wagner Wagner's looking to still be strong and and really kind of a, a name you got to look for look out for come playoff time uh, we'll kind of jump over some interesting ones over and, and some bigger ones like 6a um, big one if you follow uh, Oklahoma football a lot uh, unions and Jin uh, union and jinx uh, that game is at jinx really surprising if this score is correct I'm seeing jinx is up 21-0 on union uh, Jinx wow. really not off to kind of their usual start of the year. They've they've lost their last two games. Um, yeah. Week I think they played a week zero game against Edmond Santa Fe. Lost on a last second field goal that got blocked by Edmond Santa Fe. So that one was really surprised uh, a lot of people. Uh, but that's always always a good game between the two. Uh, kind of heavy hitters in that class. Of course, Bixby's kind of been the one in recent years that's really really taking a hold of, of 6A. Um, they were at 6A2 previously and moved yep. up to 6A1. Um, but they still look to be in, in their usual shape as they're up 41-0 uh, on Sand Springs. Uh, Sorry, I have to uh, <laughs> I have to take a picture of the – I'm trying to find the flash on my phone. I have to take a picture for the great Dylan Buckingham of Channel 4 News. He texted can, me. Uh, I can maybe, oh, maybe we'll, thank you. Uh, Gosh. we'll bypass. I'll throw the flash up so on my So this may phone. be too much information for the Squirtle stream, but – uh, we call Mr. Dylan Buckingham. His children go to Piedmont, and I don't know exactly why he wants this. So this is kind of a this is kind of a he might be watching from home. This is a busy day for Dylan because he's usually the guy that has to get footage for most of the big games around the state. Right. So what Dylan will do is he'll kind of pick like four or five games that are within a close area of one another and he will go and get film of all of them. Uh, Dylan actually showed up last year to the Blanchard Noble game uh, at the first of the year. It's always good to see him, but if he's asking for a roster, that usually tells me that he might be showing up tonight. I'm going to be – oh, you know what? There he is right there, Mr. Dylan Buckingham, down there <laughs> at the 45 getting some film uh, for tonight's anchored anchoring sports segment for Channel 4. Sorry about that. That was oh, a little no, bit of no, a segue. It's, it's fine. I, you um, know, it's somebody that – came up, you know, through playing uh, 
high we, school football in the state of Oklahoma. That's you always right. appreciate it, guys like him. Services now, you got like Squirtle, um, the franchise, your radio coverage, all that uh, just really makes it really fun. Uh, I know even when I was like a really, really small kid, getting excited just seeing, seeing me on like a sideline shot or something. So appreciate those guys, all their coverage that uh, uh, they do for the state. And looking back at, at some scores again, um, 5 am. I'm trying to see if I can find a score for Shawnee. Uh, Squirtle showing that they're playing Ardmore. Uh, so the game's starting, but uh, no updates have been applied to it yet. So. I'll maybe jump over and see if, see if some other spots, maybe an update. But uh, Shawnee is who's going to round out the last um, game for the Blanchard Lions um, for their upcoming non-district schedule. Once they're done with Shawnee, this is when we jump into that, that big time of the year where you're getting into district play where every game matters. Um, Absolutely. Especially when you got teams like Tuttle, Bethany, Newcastle in, in your district. that makes for one of the more competitive ones in Class 4A. And, yeah. and if – it, it just, you know, there's been so many times throughout the years where, you know, our team, Lions, we, we, we lose a game to one of the, one of those three, and there becomes all these crazy scenarios of, of hey, if, if, if you guys lose but this team wins, you're going to be going on the road in, in, in two weeks, or if you guys win and that team loses, you'll get to host. It's just kind of always a, a roll of the dice right at the at, right at the end of the year with that. So Absolutely. Uh, and that's we're right these, there. We're right on the doorstep of it. Games are critical for is getting you seeing your mistakes early on when you're playing good teams um, like a Piedmont tonight, like we're seeing. Um, yeah. So hopefully in that second half maybe – our next uh, score update, you know, halftime brought by uh, First United Bank. But hopefully when we It'll do our full next, time next by scoreboard, that time. yeah. yeah I mean, right. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it's a little more favorable to us by then. So here's what we're going to do. There is currently a minute left on the actual clock, but they're going to add a couple more uh, minutes for stretching for both teams coming out of the locker room. We are going to take a four-minute break here, a four-minute break before we come back and give you the second half of Piedmont versus Blanchard. It is Piedmont 14 Blanchard nothing. You are currently listening to Blanchard Lions football right here on 104.5 KRXO.
Welcome back to tonight's broadcast of uh, the second half of Blanchard versus Piedmont. Piedmont currently leading Blanchard 14-0. Blanchard is going to be kicking the ball towards the west. Piedmont will be heading east to score. Blanchard west to score. Carson, want to maybe kind of give us a little insight on what you need to see out of the Lions here in the second half, maybe a Cliff Notes version before we get started here? <laughs> yeah, really just uh – you know, not shooting yourself in the foot offensively. Yep. Um, the times we've done that, we've looked good. But ultimately, just executing all the way, um, finding the end zone. Uh, we might get a oh lucky bounce here. Whoa. Oh, it looks like a team my player kind of limping off. And So what happened to those of us not able to listen or watch on stream is ball was kicked. Um, Piedmont player, I think, got a hand on it but kind of missed it. And it took a Blanchard bounce toward the Wildcat end zone. And in that process, the person that muffed the kick kind of had a little bit of a what? Looks like a hamstring, a little bit of a – can't tell if it's a Yeah, we've been being this early. I'm, I'm kind of hoping more towards a cramp and not something yeah. with a, a knee with planning right there trying yeah. to rally up that ball. But Regardless, Piedmont uh, gets the ball uh, going east. Yeah, this is what this kind of was. It was tough with having that turnover right on that first kickoff too. Is that you would think, okay, if we're gonna get it first, we can go score. Piedmont will get the ball in the second half, and ultimately, almost, almost equaled out to just kicking off to them twice to yeah. start off the games. Uh, as Piedmont um, does an old, another little run here, kind of gets about two yards and bring up second and eight. It's very, very, very crucial for Blanchard right here to set the tone early in the second half. Have to treat it like a new game, even though. Uh, 14 down is kind of a steeper hill than a, a traditional 14 nothing climb against this team that just loves to eat up the clock. Uh, but regardless, if they get a if they get a quick stop here, they're going to be in prime position to tip the scales, if you will. Yeah, like we said earlier, it, it was kind of it's not a score that you feel too dis um, you know discouraged by. Uh, you know, you think about it, some big plays that they had. You had a turnover. If you don't turn it over, maybe they have seven points less than what they've currently got. Um, Piedmont just kind of trying again to get to the edge, testing our defense. Um, our linebackers and corners did a great job holding the edge, making him, making their guy keep bouncing, keep getting to the outside, and, and that allows your, your other defenders to rally up and provide some extra support. Before we get to this third down play, just want to give a quick shout out to tonight's title sponsor for the game, Casa de Wolf Designs. Casa de Wolf was one of our uh, initial sponsors last year uh, during our first inaugural run. Uh, and we're really glad they got to come back on board with us uh, this year. Lions defense will need a big stop here on third down. You don't want to give up too many yards as they keep holding the edge. A swarm of defenders keep getting in. Piedmont quarterback doing a great job trying to, to keep fighting for some yards. But um, with this far back, this type of offense, they run, kind of starting at the half, you got the lead. I got to imagine it's just going to – they're going to play it safe, get a punt here. Um, once again, kind of put the ball back in our hands and, and basically say, okay, now you go execute. Let's see what you've got because um, so far you, we've been able to, to manage what you have thrown at us. It's a, it's a great start. It's about as good as a start you can ask for if you're a Blanchard Lion, though. I mean, you want to get that quick three and out uh, to see if you can uh, sing a little bit of a different tune here in the second half when it comes to offense. Right. And, you know, coming out of halftime, teams will make adjustments. So, like you're saying, um, Kids might be fixing one or two things that they weren't doing that first half. That gives them a little bit of encouragement going forward of, okay, hey, that's why that's why my coach is telling me this. That's why I need to be there because um, look at the result. And with that punt by Piedmont, it takes a little bit of a, a, of a Blanchard bounce, and they're probably, I mean, arguably starting in about as good f field position as they've – words, Drake, <laughs> words. Starting with as good field position as they've had all game. Yeah, this is probably the best position they've had other than that fourth and second we had up yeah. earlier where we you know, kind of did that little fake handoff and tried to pass and they, they got to it. Um, so hopefully kind of offensively saw some things that you can continue to, to kind of target on, on Piedmont and test the waters on and see, hey, can we can we gash them here or can we just, you know, get get good progression on each um, – on each play where we're getting some yardage that's going to set us up. With that being said, I really like what Blanchard's are doing here, going straight back to the run. <laughs> um, one of the things that we really didn't get to pitch on in that second in that first half was it's kind of hard to establish a run when you uh, are causing so many penalties uh, on your own on your own accord. 
Cooks is going to drop back. He's got Cord, I believe Cord Pierce. Cord Pierce does a great job of high balling that point, reels it in. That's and a we Blanchard finally, touchdown. finally right. get our first Yarbrough and Sons touchdown of the night. Thanks again for sponsoring tonight's game. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's kind of – when you're playing a team like this, that's a quick score is what you're going to need yeah. to try to get back into this. And we're very familiar with Blanchard being able to cover a lot of ground in a short amount of time, and it's because a combination of – Carson Cooksey being able to put that ball where no one else is able to get it, and Corey Pierce going up, getting it at its apex, being able to create that space from his defender. Alex Price is going to set up for the PAT here, and high school these can be pretty crucial, um, especially on a team like Piedmont. Let's see if we can get our looking good from here so Beautiful. far. Ref signal it in, good kick there by Alex Price, gets us to seven and fourteen. Um, really crucial point if you kind of think about it, trying to get back into the game. If you score again, now you can you can go for another PAT and not worry about having to chase points early on. Absolutely. Blanchard strikes back very quickly. There's only nine minutes left to go here in the third quarter. We are going to take a short break. The Lions punch back. I'm Drake. That's Carson. You're listening to Blanchard Lions TV, Blanchard Lions football here on Classic Rock 104.5. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle. Welcome back into Piedmont America. Blanchard Lines just scored a quick, quick third quarter score and Piedmont now has the ball back. Lions special team rallying up. Kid's going to, it's like number, I believe that might have been 13 from earlier. It kind of limped off the field. Good to see him back out there. It wasn't anything major, but uh, good kick there. You know, back past two kickoffs we've had by uh, Maldonado, um, setting up the Lions defense in a, a favorable position um, on, a, on a team like Piedmont, where further back you can keep them, um, a lot more confident you're going to feel. And it's kind of interesting when you talk about the dynamics of just, you know, what Piedmont runs and kind of how it swings momentum. With an offense like Blanchard able to take shots quickly and able to score points so quickly, I think it tips the scales even more of the direction to them when you talk about momentum, just how it swings to Blanchard's side so quickly, being able to score as fast as they did. Right. And kind of tying off of that, too, that's where your your, your special teams Great kind tackle. of kind of play. As he's wrapped up there, it looks to be is that Tyler. That was Ben Hefner. The weak side linebacker, 42. I believe Tyler Hughes helped out there on the tackle as well. But yeah, your special teams, especially at, at all levels too, uh, it, it's really beneficial to you. Uh, you know, when you're pinning somebody like Piedmont back, if your defense can get a three and out here, that keeps your offense even closer to, to that end zone again. Piedmont going to test the edge again here. It's quarterback number 14, Joshua Mars, gets up kind of around the edge. Um, gets some good yardage there for them. Um, looks to be that will bring up a third and short for the Wildcats. Even though they got a big gain on that, that's kind of how, how important that first down play is and how you kind of set the tone for that down. Uh, because third and three, I mean, that that is kind of a – a good chunk of yards that they can possibly get, but still, because you're able to do your work early on that first down, you have a three, you know, a third down to begin with. And the third down is going to be tough too, because if you don't, you don't make a stop immediately there and say they're fourth and one. They, we saw it a lot last year when they played us. Um, haven't seen it too, too much tonight. Piedmont looks like they'll get a first down there, um, so reset the chains, but. If you get like a fourth and one, last year they really loved um, just going heavy set, getting their QB right under the center, and just everybody go push. We're gonna push. We're gonna push him. Um, that's kind of been a trend you've seen, um, kind of come College. around in football lately. Yeah. You can't you can't pull your guy, but you can you can shove him forward, and kind of been a little controversial to some. As, Absolutely. As far as ethics on that, but uh, you know, a yard is a yard, especially in that situation. I 
Piedmont's defense kind of holding the front there, um, kind of clouding it up. Um, Piedmont really didn't have a good hole to get through there, but yet again, still kind of got a good enough of a push to go get three yards there. Before the next play uh, commences, just going to give a quick shout out to Casa de Wolf Designs, the title sponsor for tonight's game, and a couple of our other sponsors, including Craig and Stray Orthodontics, the LB Realty Group, and Coop's Performance Gym. Thank you so much for supporting Blanchard football this year. So there's a little bit of that triple option pitch. Um, this is where really, really tough if a team runs it well just to defend it because you might have a guy that just maybe could have taken a little bit of a better angle and, and just didn't take good enough to where their guy out athletes you, goes gets a big game like there and just kind of that physicality and mental, mentally breaking you down, just really making, hey, you got it, you got to stay committed, you got to stay yeah. responsible to your, you know, your areas. If you're watching um, on stream, you probably saw a late hit happen to one of the Blanchard players. You can see the coaches on the uh, far sideline down there arguing about that late hit. They said there's been a couple of those, both called and non-called on both sides. So Piedmont on this drive is really loving favoring um, the top side of our defense here if you're watching on the stream. Um, they keep going to their right. Um, really kind of liking this dive option, triple option, where they're, um, you know, that running back that's behind the quarterback, he's going to run straight down, mm -hmm. either an A or a B gap. And quarterback's reading that edge guy. If that edge guy, you know, one of our, our Blake Woods or – um, Braden Heffernan, if any of those are collapsing down, he's going to pull it out, get on the edge, and test our outside linebackers and cornerbacks. This is a very interesting spot for them. So you see that time, keep running. They really liking what they're seeing from this play on this drive, but that time, uh, most likely had our edge guy kind of stop for a second, yeah. um, respecting the quarterback pool, and they, they'll just hand it off, and he's going to go up and get, you know, five, six yards on that. And now you're talking about being in no man's land where you almost have to assume as the defense that no matter if they get this third down uh, conversion or not, you do have to be expecting another play. Yeah, it's, it's it's a gut test here because you can could, you could do everything in your power and get a good stop here on third down, and most teams would, would you know, um, punt it but, or kind of run a play that you can maybe defend a little bit better. But, you know, they're just going to they're gonna bring it down. Um, oh, that was a great, great, great open field there. tackle. I believe it was that Corrick kind of coming down. That was down. Corrick. Yeah, coming All down from way. that safety spot. So he did he did a great job at that safety spot. Um, it's kind of tough on these um, offenses. I can speak from experience the few times we played a team like this. Um, those those bad guys in your secondary, uh, your safeties, they're watching the guard. Um, so Corrick read that guard, made the right play, got really did a great job of getting downfield to blow it, blow yeah. it up and take them out of territory where they could go for it on a fourth down, even if we got to that at the line of scrimmage. This is an interesting play right here. Yeah, you got to be ready for some trickery. I think they're just going to go to a short punt now. Nope. Okay, interesting play from Piedmont. Special teams did a great job of – Blanchard read it well. – of uh, being, you know, expecting that, being there to rally up for it. I'm surprised they didn't hold on to that maybe a little bit – later in the game if you got like a fourth and five or a fourth and six right. versus a fourth, fourth and nine and, yeah it was kind of interesting because they've had a little bit of success just their traditional their traditional looks on offense and then well, just kind of pulling something like that it kind of it's kind of yeah your defense is kind of alerted especially too and they shift all those guys there i mean yeah. you know you shift that it is going to catch you off guard if you don't rally up to it and they got more bodies than you but like you know, our defense rallied up to that and stopped that short and we're going to offensive play and it's another opportunity tie it up here Lines back to a, a standard four wide set, running back to the right of Cooksey. Cooksey reading the edge. He's going to hand it off to, I believe, Mikhail Howe there. Mikhail's going to get a great run here. I know that's what Drake loves to see is getting the <laughs> run started off here. I uh, mean, I, I, think, I, I think it's a universal good thing because this is exactly how the very last drive started on that score. Right. Establishing that run, and it leads to deep bombs in the end. Mine's going to say to it, kind of looking back to the same set, kind of that inside zone read. Uh, Piedmont rallies to it, a little bit more discipline here, expecting it, stopping us short, uh, maybe a one-yard gain at the most. So one of the games last year that me and Todd liked to play, and it kind of stinks because he's no, he's not in the game right now because he's right. injured, but Reagan Palmer was such a big, deep threat 1v1. Uh, Court Pierce might be the one to fill that role for this game, but having that deep threat on the field at all times is so big especially during these comebacks. 
Cooksey pass out to the flats. Um, taunting. Taunting again. I gotta get that just down. Just a little, keep, keep just a little loose. over. A little, little newer to me, but yeah, kind of running a quick five-yard out route there at the top of top of your screen. Uh, a little overthrown, but kind of liked what you had there. You had a little bit of open field. Um, See, they're bringing in, uh, is that Perryman? Perryman's in, probably going to a, a tight end set with mm -hmm. him. Uh, looks to be, they're going to go five wide out of it or four wide with the tight end set. Um, you can see here, he's enough of an athlete where you don't have to have him at that tight end spot. So he's going to be kind of more at that inside receiver spot. Man, just right through the hands. It was a perfectly thrown ball. And, you know, honestly, you had is that Pierce, is that Court? I believe Pierce three. kind of. And you had Brayson also wide open in the Brayson, middle. Brayson kind of looked like a little little go route, kind of skinny it into the inside. And, um, you know, almost almost had him hit him just for a, a good, ball. big gain. Uh, a little bit of traffic there, you know, defender. So yeah. probably it's that's gonna be a little hard. For Middle you of the on, field's on tricky, man. You you start having some second thoughts you about see, people you being see close to you. You see out of the corner of your eye. You can get a little a little worried. Antsy. Yeah. <laughs> like, but at the same time, it's like, okay, if, if I think I'm gonna get blown up, let me make it worthwhile. Yeah. Uh, line staying with that kind of five wide set as Cooksey's gonna get a quick punt off. Hopefully, takes a Blanchard bounce. Does not. Gonna go to the end zone. Um, Lion defense going to get another challenge here and a chance to continue to uh, prove themselves. So let's play, you know, a little math game right here. We've had one Piedmont drive and we've had one Blanchard drive and there's three minutes left in the quarter. Yeah. Um, it goes quick, man. This right. game and especially a game like this where it's only separated by one single score. I mean, it's it's got to be a perfection game from here on out. You cannot be making little mistakes. Right, and it's it's such like you're saying, kind of the perfection game. But Piedmont too, they're in the driver's seat right now. They yeah. got a seven point lead. They already take off enough clock as it is. So every play, you're telling your quarterback, hey, let that run down to about four or three seconds, then snap it. You don't have to snap it at twenty. You don't have to snap it right away. With that being said, though, the Blanchard D has uh, responded very well in these situations thus far. So far, we, uh, you know, they they got us out of that set. Uh, um, kind of that big play they did get on the edge on us. Uh, kind of got one of our guys probably on an angle, uh, gashed us for about 15, 20 yards on it. So hoping if you do have a repeat of that, that they um, – Contain it. Right, that they rally up to it, get set back, um, you know, ru rub it off, um, get set back up and get a, a get a fourth down stop like they did earlier. Absolutely. And so what I'd, I think, too, what you want to look for, too, if you're the defense, is making sure not to bite on any hard counts. Because um, you I mean, start – oh, here they go on the edge, kind of right again. They get us there, hopefully. Great job by uh, Brayson. He was the last man uh, available, and he was able to push him out on the sideline. Yeah, it's, just, it's a tough concept to defend. Uh, we see there, hopefully – Get some adjustment. If somebody went somewhere wrong, coach was kind of yelling it out to them, letting the player hear it. You know, the one thing we do need to be thankful for is that at least the clock isn't running after first downs, like they're <laughs> introducing in the college in the college ranks. That would be working against Blanchard right now. That's a really great save there. Is that taunting? Twenty-three. No. I kind of got scared there too on it because you you know their their guy ran over ran over we believe it Taunty. was taunting yeah kind of had a little bit of momentum still going there you're worried if he plants a hand down and rallies up I yeah. mean he's he's taking it we're looking at a two score deficit um that being said though I mean, you still play. got you still got plenty of room to make a difference right here just got to stop the bleeding a little bit. So Piedmont is now across midfield, um, pressing into Blanchard territory here. A little bit of discussion going on with Blanchard sideline and the officiating crew. Huh. Wonder what they're anything with the clock maybe? For a substitution? It is substitution. You just see you subbed off there. Rio Reynolds is in the game now. Uh, he just replaced Taunting. He's a Taunting. That corner spot. 
So like you see there, we just we've got we've got a body there, just aren't able to wrap up the Piedmont quarterback, and and that's where they they're gonna get you for those those gains that you're looking to avoid as a as a defense. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I was talking to Coach Craig earlier today about you know with Palmer being out, just kind of the rotation because he was a two-way player. We've seen a little bit of Tonsing tonight and a little bit of Rio, um, which stays true to what um, kind of the game plan is, kind of a position by committee at this point. Right. Yeah, it's so, you know, you hate to lose that depth, especially when you got guys going both ways where, uh, you know, when you have Reagan out there at corner, you can maybe sub him out for a play if he needs a break, put Tonsing in. But now you're, you're a little bit thinner in, in respects to that with – Todd seeing is who is going both ways right. and some other players in some other positions and um, you're kind of forced to go a little bit deeper into your offensive playbook too as far as formations where you might have to make some more substitutions to go it's five a, wide instead of four it's wide. It's a very generous spot for that run up the middle for Piedmont just now. Thought that he might have lost. I don't know if he got back to the line of scrimmage on that one honestly. Besides the up. point, 34. <laughs> still, a, still a pretty okay position to be in. So we fingers crossed we can rally up, get a big um, tackle in the backfield like we did on the last drive when we faced in a similar situation. I believe it's okay. progress going to stop maybe Man. two yards. Dude, they have a little these, yard extra than I thought they would. These spots are interesting. Well, I, we say that. Yeah. Than, we don't blink at the, the two times they gave Blanchard the, uh, the first down in that first half <laughs> when we didn't even think they had the first down. <laughs> Okay, they, they they spotted it a little a little bit short of the line. This is this is that dead man's territory you, yeah. you brought up earlier, where I gotta imagine either they're gonna go back to this kind of dive option that they've been running at us, or they might just body up and you know snap it, and you're gonna run up one yard behind the line of everybody. Oh. So they expect probably saw what looked like we were anticipating that and they went back to the edge. Not I think that was right was that Ryder Dobbs 77? Ryder Dobbs almost had the hit on him uh, behind the line, which would have stopped them just short of the first down mark. But he just the quarterback just escaped him. And with that being said, we very quickly come to the end of the third quarter. Blanchard punched back early in the third, but Piedmont still holds a, a short lead of 14 to 7 here at the end of the third. We are in Piedmont, America. My name is Drake Vidito. That is Carson Craig. We will be taking a quick one minute break, bringing you the final quarter of action here at Piedmont. You're listening to Blanchard Lions TV and one Classic Rock 104.5. Google.com right now for more information. For more than 100 years, Oklahoma Career Tech has been training skilled and dedicated individuals, giving clear career paths to over 90,000 graduates a year. These individuals are the heartbeat of the Oklahoma workforce, serving thousands of companies, fueling this state's economy. Oklahoma is powered by Career Tech. system? Give the experts at Versatile Networks a call. In most cases, we can provide a phone system with brand new phones for less than your current monthly bill. Call us for a free quote today. Welcome back. We are here in Piedmont, America. It's the start of the fourth quarter. Piedmont has the ball. Well, once again, they're going to go up the middle. A little dive there from Piedmont offense. This is, uh, this is what we were talking about earlier, Carson. Um, Piedmont offense has kind of had back-to-back -back times where they've been on the field uh, in, a quick, in a quick two, um, and that's kind of led that Blanchard defense come a little bit uh, – Stamina prone, if if that's an appropriate way to say it. Yeah, and there's we've had trouble with 
teams similar in the past. We played teams like Poto in the playoffs, and mm -hmm. they're even – what's even worse on playing them is they go up-tempo with it even too. Yeah. Um, so your guys are you know, already kind of struggling to line up when it's not something they're seeing all the time, and then when they're breaking out of the huddle and immediately lined up, you got to, okay, I'm on the left side, I'm on the right side. Who's strong side? Who needs to be where? This is only my second year of doing this, but uh, – I'm very aware of the history that Poto and Blanchard have, and I just uh, – I'm not really going to be looking forward for that drive if we have to make it. <laughs> cool. Yeah, if, if we're going to meet up with him in the playoffs, we need to, we need to at least get, get a home game out of him right. for once. <laughs> Return the favor. But Piedmont pressing again into Blanchard territory with a third and one uh, coming up here. All right, keep going up the middle. It's it's hard to go away from it when you're getting four to five yards every time. It's kind of one of those, we're going to keep running it until you, until you show us you're going to stop it. And it's really tough, too, because I feel like that was one of Blanchard's strengths there in the first half and even a little bit in the third was being able to secure that middle where you're daring them to beat you on the edge, right. saying we're going to out-athlete you on the edge. And now it's just it's kind of hard to go back to that honey hole when it's not working. And it's one of those two, if you, if you do finally show to them, hey, we can stop it, you can't get anything up in the middle, it'll be, okay, we're going to jump back to out to the edge. Um, quarterback kind of a little sneak here. Uh, kind of gives it a second to let his O-line get a push. Um, and he's going to get about another three yards off the QB. Now yeah. there's going to be about ten minutes left on this clock by the time the next play happens. Piedmont's able to get into the end zone. Uh, Blanchard's got to be thinking about taking – one of those shots they took to get that seven on the board in the first place because you're not going to be having a whole bunch of time. Even if Piedmont's able to get even one or even two first downs before they have to punt it on that ensuing drive because it just it just eats up the clock too much. Yeah, you got to imagine, especially if they go up two scores here, that Piedmont defensively, if they have to go up against us again, it might be, hey, we're gonna we're gonna sit back in soft coverage. We're gonna let everything come come in front of us, uh, come to us, and really take away that deep threat and you know okay we're fine with giving up four or five yards you're gonna have to bleed another 30 seconds off to get another play called in set up and executed Piedmont taking their sweet time 22 seconds left on the play clock Okay. So lines kind of hold the edge there. Now I'm kind of curious. This is an interesting spot if because we were talking about the, the kicking. The field goal, if yeah. they're going to go that and get it a, a two possession or if they feel feel good enough here to say, hey, no, you know what? We're going to go We're gonna go for what we feel like is a kill shot. We're going we're gonna to try to get this first down or a touchdown This uh, really put ourselves in the driver's this seat. This honestly, I know there's eight minutes and 30 seconds left, but this honestly might be the play of the game here. <laughs> They like to go for it. No kicker. And keep it yeah, as defensively, you want to be disciplined here and not jump off sides. They might do a hard count as their coach is calling timeout. Coach is running down the field to get a timeout called. He had to run about 20 yards to get it right in front of the face of the uh, so. side judge there. We're going to take a break with them, a quick one-minute break, and see what happens on this fourth and three. It's Piedmont 14, Blanchard 7. You're listening to Blanchard Lions football on 104.5 Classic Rock. Find out more at scordo.com slash stream. At Maple's Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples, Nicks, and Diesel Horst, and we are here to help. The AMG team is based in Oklahoma City and delivers your organization revenue enhancement through a combination of data science, innovative marketing, and business automation. We think like owners and behave as long-term partners. Delivering measurable results for nearly 20 years has made the AMG team known for our ability to efficiently and effectively execute objectives. We're ready to help raise your organization.
Welcome back. Carson might be the most interesting point of the game here as Piedmont holds a 14-7 the lead over the Lions. It's fourth and three at their eight. Yeah, they uh, eight. looked like they went out there. They kind of wanted to see how we would line up to a formation that they had. I'm surprised they didn't. They're at going least, for the kick. At least try for a hard count there before that timeout. Well, this is um, this is huge. That's a lot of faith in your kicker with eight minutes and 30 to go. But they've, like I said, kind of looking looking around, trying to find some more information on before this game. Looks like oh, they jump. So it looks like my prediction actually came true on the field goal part, not for the <laughs> formation. So um, really heady call there by Piedmont. Um, you know, because our, our guys, when they see you change from a formation to a field goal, they're assuming, okay, we're going to we're gonna go block There's, that. We're going to go make the a, play. There can be a hard count on, on, a, on a field yeah, goal. We're going to go go make the play of the game like we were, we were talking about. That's uh, very disheartening. Being, being there, so. One of, uh, one of uh, Coach Craig's commandments to win in this game tonight was uh, not making self-mistakes. And when you look back on this game, especially Piedmont scores here, two of those scores are coming off of mistakes that um, were uncalled for. Yeah, especially when we were talking about it seems like they've got a, a field goal kicker they can go to. That's why you wouldn't think, oh, oh they're going to go for a hard, you know, hard count there. They're just going to kick field goal, go up by two scores. Piedmont's going to punch it in, make it a two-score game. Uh, but now, really, puts the pressure yet again on the offense to execute in, in a fast manner and an efficient manner. And, you know, one of the things we really haven't talked about, what's so good about Piedmont is it's really hard to, hard to cause a turnover in that kind of offense. There's not a lot of there's not a lot of through-the-air game. So there's just right. – if you have backers that – you know, are really good with ball security. It's just really hard to make opportunities for yourself. Like you said, you're not you're not out in open space a lot too with the ball where it might get loose for a second, kind of depending on how you run to where a player might punch it out. Um, PAT yeah. is good by the Wildcats in. That makes the score 21 to seven. Piedmont is up by two touchdowns against Blanchard. There's about eight minutes and 24 seconds left here. We're gonna take a quick one minute break bring back the action right to you here in the final minutes of the fourth. I am Drake, that is Carson. You're listening to Blanchard Lions football on Classic Rock 104.5. Welcome back here in Piedmont, America, where Piedmont currently holds a 21-7 lead over Blanchard's about eight minutes and 24 seconds left. Carson, as this kick goes off to Blanchard, they're going to need something big here on offense quick. Yeah, you would kind of hope maybe for like a special teams miracle and kick return to where you, you get your score back in maybe just 20 seconds. But yeah. Uh, not going to be the case here. Um, Lions are going to have to drive. Looks to be just above 70 yards. You know, um, my mind goes back to, I, I believe it was the Shawnee game last year. Blanchard connects on a big go at the very beginning of the game, and I think they get it. I think it was um, somewhere late in the third maybe. They, they connect on the first play of the drive down there mm -hmm. uh, on another big, big chunk yardage play to uh, go for another touchdown. So right. one one or two score play scores are not like out of the question for this team. They're very explosive. It's just Piedmont's Piedmont's done a really good job containing tonight. Well it's gonna be so hard kind of it looks like uh who was that? I think that was Terrence Howard. Terrence Howard. Wrong roster. Um, yeah. Terrence Johnson. Terrence Johnson dropping the pass there. Um, 
It's kind of tough. It, you kind of liked – it looked like, like I was saying, where you're going to have some of the shorter stuff um, be presented to you as an option where mm-hmm. at corner, he's he's playing deep coverage. He's fine with giving you a five-yard slant if, if that's what you're going to throw at him. He's got safety that can come help rally up that tackle. And you got to give just, credit to Cooksey, too. He's made those right decisions. Right. Uh, he has not tried to gamble for big gains just because of that score. Lions try to get running game, maybe catch – Piedmont off guard, anticipating pass, but they, they are sound. They are there to wrap um, Mikhail Howell up there. Sadly, though, even though he has made those right decisions, uh, the dividends have not necessarily paid out all the times. Uh, receivers dropping balls, and I feel like that that's going to be kind of – I don't really know if it's more of a teaching point. Both of those balls have been kind of up the middle. I don't know if it's more of a maturity thing, just knowing that you're going to get hit, or, hit either way if you think you are or not. you just got to be able to – to bunker down and catch that ball. Just kind of with it being tipped up past here by the uh, – Looks like we're going to have some pass interference, I believe. I, I would – from where it was thrown, kind of look towards maybe? Carter. Yeah, I'm leaning kind of more defensive holding maybe when Brace was trying to go on that go route. Um, they're probably thinking that's philosophy. If, if the guy thinks he's going to get beat, hey, let me hold him. If I get caught for it, they get five yards, and I'm mm. not giving up the touchdown. I'll, I'll be better about it next go-round. While we figure out what this uh, penalty is, I just want to give a quick shout-out to all of our sponsors, First United Bank & Mortgage, Yarbrough & Sons Heating & Air, Brightway Insurance, LB Realty Group, Hometown Healthcare, Casa de Wolf Designs, Blanchard Eye Care, Sutterfield Surveying, Coops Performance Gym, Quick Wrench, Keeler Custom Homes, Ten Arrows Roofing, and Craig and Straight Orthodontics. We could not do this without you. We appreciate everyone for pitching in uh, in Blanchard football this year. Yep, it was defense holding. We were right. So confirmed by Piedmont's PA defensive hey, holding. We were right. No big deal. No big deal. We were right. So Lions are going to get a new set of downs out of that. Um, and thankfully, the clock has stopped um, for the time being. Uh, but yeah, just kind of, I, I got to imagine. Uh, we might, if they're going to give us the shorter stuff, maybe keep trying to hit it. Uh, we maybe go with a quick out route at some point in here where it's five yards, you get the ball, get out of bounds, we'll go from there. As Carter gets a catch here up in the middle of the field, looks to be right at the first down yard line. Let's see if they signal. I'm trying to do some math in my head because we're about at, what, 723 right now. Let's just do some quick theoretical here. It takes about, you know, two minutes, 20 seconds for them to score to get you about five minutes. I want to say maybe one or two first downs you allow yourself for the defense, and then you kind of got to be on that warning clock. Well, and if we score here, you don't want to rule out just kind of where you're at in the time clock. Uh, and Piedmont might might anticipate it. Maybe if you're kind of worried as far as them taking away too much clock, it might be, you know what, let's try an onside. If we don't get the yeah. onside, uh, maybe our defense can get a stop within three plays. We'll mm-hmm. burn some timeouts, try to get a hold. Um, but, yeah, just a lot, to, a lot to consider if you go that direction or you line up for it and they're anticipating it. Maybe you just kick it back deep and, and kind of hope that you can get your three and out stop and it kind of helps your offense stay stay up the field as Brayson's going to catch another, another um, flag. pass in the middle of the field. Is that like, another defensive holding? Well, let's see. It kind of came far back there. Not the back judge, I believe. Uh, Terrence is kind of running behind Brayson, so maybe either another holding, hopefully not a man downfield. Uh, but it being that far back there, I wouldn't anticipate man downfield. And, you know, this is nothing out of the ordinary. Piedmont's kind of been doing this all game. I mean, no no defense have been, has been playing perfect through any stretch of the imagination right now. Right. I think it's, it's just Piedmont's been able to capitalize on those mistakes more often than Blanchard has. I think, like, I think they're probably – they might have even told their corners or, you know, secondary. At any point, if you get beat, just grab onto him. If we get the ball back, this is – we feel confident it's going to be game. Mm. Uh, and right as I talk I about mistakes. Maybe I should just not say anything. Maybe I just will just be – call it right down the middle. Be neutrality. Like the, uh, the announcer's jinx or, you know, field goal kicker hasn't missed anything all night and then he's uh, just going to shank a 25 yards. Isn't it weird shot. how that always seems to, like, <laughs> that actually works? I don't know. It could be like recency bias or something, but I feel like it truly oh, almost it's probably, always happens. You always joke that the, that the curse is going to happen, that it doesn't happen, but you, and then you're going to forget that one. But then right. when it does hit on, you're going to remember. You only forever yeah, and that's ever. true. That's true. If it's a big game and it's your team and you're, you know, 
feeling defeated. By the uh, I will say uh, Corrick Pierce is on an island here at the bottom of your screen. If he goes for a go, I don't know if that's safety. Another false start. Blanchard not doing themselves any favors. That is the second false start in a row for the Lions, setting up a first and 20. And what's going the wrong way, they're going west. We want to go east. And what's tough is you keep losing some time off that clock. Clock starts back uh, after the ball is lined up, and you got to get another play call if you want to switch it up. I am intrigued, though, because if Piedmont lines up in that same formation, Court Pierce is on an island down here on the bottom of your screen if they end up going, sending him wide. Now, if you got a first down, if they – Gives you oh, an no. alignment you like. You might you might test the waters on a little True. screen here. Yeah. They're gonna sell out. It's everything deep. Might try to do. So Lions, so far just kind of finding that that weak spot of the Piedmont's defense is that middle of the field. Hey, go run up there, go sit down about seven yards downfield, catch the ball. Maybe you can break one off, go deep. If not, we've got plenty of set of downs. So keep doing that. Get us a little bit closer to where we can. Maybe try a different play later on. And it's almost like Piedmont's gambling, saying we'll give it to you because you haven't been able to capitalize in the long, in the long end of the field yeah. on it. Oh yeah, and it's and the clock's gonna keep going. It's not gonna stop. Um, so again, but here here's where I was talking about if you can break one off. Hudson yeah, does a great job there, kind of getting almost run into Piedmont's uh, sideline, trying to break some tackles, gets about five extra yards. So now you've got third and manageable when you yeah. have first and twenty. So. You want to take that, get yourself closer. You don't have to take a money shot unless it's just absolutely there for you. Lions going to stay in that four wide set with Hudson Perryman at tight end. He's got him on the out route here. He's got a one on one situation. Piedmont does a great job rallying to it. Now, maybe down, this is but, the game. But this right here, you can still, you got it a lot closer. You've got. Yeah, they've still got to respect. They can't just absolutely abandon um, run responsibilities here. Right. So you could, if you felt confident enough and if they bailed out to it, you could almost run a draw. But yeah. I think it's just far back enough with what we've seen tonight that you're going to keep trying for maybe something short or fake like you're going to do something short and looks take like, that, looks take like that Piedmont, long pass. I think Piedmont might have a spy just to kind of seal that run. I could got to be just the same result there. So Blanchard has all three timeouts left. So – if something's going to happen, it needs to happen on this set of downs. No first downs from here on out. Uh, we'll see if that can hold true. But they are on the opposite side of the field. So uh, I think they're going to be punting the ball in this situation if they can just get to that fourth down. And with the, with, they've got you know, this cushion of a, of a, a two-touchdown score. Yeah. Really, if we get back in that no man's uh, no man zone, and I, I anticipate Piedmont's going to say, why not? They've only got – I right. got two, two whatever minutes to make some magic happen. So we're going to run it up at you. We're going to test you. Okay, if you stop us, okay. We ran some more time off, and you still got to go two scores here. Make sure you guys sit on those timeouts for now. Okay. You might get a good stop here. You might let the clock go a little bit more, and then if you get one more stop on a third down and you like your field positioning, mm -hmm. you might burn that first one. Just so you're not. They're putting up a fight. I mean, that's this defense is holding in, yeah. a, in a spot where you absolutely need it. So Sitting on your timeouts gives you enough time to kind of see what you're getting from your defense here on this drive, just in case if Piedmont does break one or gets past that first down, that you can take a timeout and uh, try, try on the next set of three downs, kind of use them then. So once this play concludes – and if they do indeed hold them on fourth, it's going to be about at the two-minute mark when the ball is punted. A little toss there, almost rallied up. Good tackle right. there. Is that an out of bounds? Nope, clock kept, like keeps running. Tyler Hughes put the pressure on their running back, kind of forced him out of bounds. Got some support there on the edge. And From we Matthew see the Thompson. first time out uh, that Blanchard takes in the half. We're going to take it with them. It is Piedmont 21, Blanchard 7. Uh, Blanchard will be getting the ball punted to them here in the fourth without any trickery from Piedmont. My name is Drake. That's Carson. You're listening to Blanchard Lions football on Classic Rock 104.5.
Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Welcome back. We are in the final minutes of a great game that's been played so far tonight. Piedmont currently holds the lead against Blanchard 21-7. Fourth down coming up. Blanchard's going to get a chance to go down and score and make this a one-possession game. Bryce is going to field the catch, try to make something happen. And Piedmont is there. And about three, three Piedmont defenders there on the tackle. Lions are going to be stuck at the 30-yard line, uh, meaning to go 70 yards yet again. Uh, really time as as their biggest uh, you know, enemy Opponent. here. <laughs> <laughs> um, Got to give credit to Piedmont's defense, though. They've uh, they've done pretty well, both, uh, both times considered, um, both halves considered. Um, but with that being said, this lone Blanchard scorer came on a big, big chunk yardage play. It kind of came out of nowhere. We'll see if uh, Luck stands here and they're able to put some together in this drive. Yeah, Blanchard's going to go with a pass set here with that uh, five wide. Um, a little crossing route there by Lee Hudson. Perryman. Yep, Hudson Perryman and kind of a little quick crossing route. And it, it, it stinks because you know Piedmont's going to be sitting on those deep balls. And right. So you have to you – ha you need to – have these short yarded situations um, because to give you any chance to set up for something big down the line. And they might, you know, they might be doing a great job of defending. I'm curious to see. Another. Tried to hit Terrence Johnson again on a slant route. A little bit behind him, but still a catchable ball. And it's probably a little tougher for Terrence because I believe he got moved to outside receiver with uh, Reagan's injury. So yep. um, a lot of your slant stuff, not used to being outside there and having a quarter press on you, kind of. Kind of used to maybe having a linebacker who's a little bit less, um, you know, mobile as a cornerback would be. As Cooksey is going to get brought down. Piedmont's left edge rusher. Got to give credit to Piedmont's uh, D line tonight. They have uh, been able to successfully get to Cooksey here a couple of times, and it seems to be, it always seems to be the most inopportune moments <laughs> during the game. Uh, this is where you kind of. A little bit of a learning lesson, um, you know. I, I, you got guys going both sides of the ball. It's just it's going to get tiresome yeah. once you get to this part of the game too. And it's yeah, just one one little misstep in a technique, and and that's going to be the difference between a sack and a, and a touchdown or a completed pass. And he's going to get pressure again. Cooks is going to sit in, throw a great pass. Looks to be brought in, caught by Brayson Carter, but kind of looked like almost last week. Was, Scenario, if you remember, with Corrick and a, a noble receiver, where it looks like the receiver catches it and the defender gets it. So yeah. we'll kind of wait to see what the kind of a fifty fifty ball is. But they're gonna say he caught it and he was down before it was wrangled out. Because on fifty fifty balls, um, the leeway goes more to the uh, you know the offensive player. Yes. There's about 47 seconds left here in this fourth quarter. I uh, just want to give a quick shout-out to Casa de Wolf Designs for being tonight's title sponsor. Really give a shout-out to all of our participating sponsors for this season. Uh, none of this, none of the stuff that Carson brings you, none of the stuff that I bring you, what Todd brings you, all the crew here, doesn't really, doesn't really get to come to fruition without your guys' help. And so we really appreciate everyone that's been able to uh, – uh, support the cause in our second year of uh, doing this stuff. We love doing it, and we're glad we have the support of the Blanchard community as well. Uh, is that a fourth down before it, and they called it incomplete, or did we get like a you know, sideline on sportsman like? <laughs> so Piedmont's going to get in victory formation. Quarterback's going to take a knee. We'll have, have one more snap. Maybe. Unless, unless they just go ahead and just let it run out, which I think both teams will probably be fine with that, especially being a district, non-district matchup. Yeah. Um, but they'll, they'll probably just line it up real quick and take one more and 
called that the game. Called the game. And thank you to Piedmont for letting us host this and fans. And thank yeah. you to all who tuned in and all our fans that traveled well to Piedmont. Hope to you to know, travel well with us throughout the season. You know, tonight, Carson, was one of those interesting games where, you know, I think a lot of people are going to see last year's score. Um, they're going to see that Blanchard scored more points, but you're also going to see that Piedmont also scored more points in last year's contest. Uh, and really, people that have watched on the stream, people that were listening to us during the whole game, two of Piedmont's scores came off of uh, opportunities that were presented, uh, given to them by the Lions. So I really think tomorrow when the Lions go down and – or maybe Sunday when the Lions take a look at, you know, the tail of the tape. This one definitely was a lot closer than it kind of maybe played out in the end. Yeah, and this, like I said, this game's not one that you're concerned about record-wise. Of it's, course. It's a good, like I said, just a really good um, test and, and basically some lessons you'll get out of it. To, like we said, you'll go back to film, you'll see stuff that – Maybe you're getting lazy because you're getting worn down, that you're not you, – you're going to do something because it's easier, not because it's what you were taught. Yeah. Um, you know, just your, your younger defense, throwing something new at them, seeing how well they prepared through the week, seeing, um, you know, some areas that they can improve and also some areas that you can encourage them on um, that, that you saw that, hey, look, you know, you might be feeling defeated. You, you know, you, you had a great task of, of playing a flex bone type offense. Yeah. Um, and also, too, offensively, kind of got some guys in different spots. Like we were talking about, the Reagan being out. Um, hopefully, we'll get him back sooner than later um, with that injury. But um, you kind of hope maybe those guys have got put in different spots. They'll see some stuff, too, on that film. Uh, kind of get a little bit more comfortable being shifted around like they yeah. were. And when it comes to, you know, the LB Realty Group player of the game, I think it's really hard in this situation to kind of try and pick someone on the defense. We gave it to Carson Cooksey last week, but I feel like, and you can tell me if I'm wrong on this or not, I feel like we got to give it to Court Pierce tonight. That that one lone throw that led to the only score for Blanchard tonight um, was a pretty good catch. It was in coverage. He was able to create that separation. And in a game where there wasn't a whole ton of, you know, highlight plays, billboard plays that you could maybe give to the Lions, I think that was one of the lone ones that deserves its recognition. Uh, uh, unless there might be a defensive candidate that you might want to sway my sway my uh, gesture now, with. No, I think I, I think you can still keep Cork on that. I was just going to point out that that great defensive stop he he played a hand in. I mean, obviously Very other true. other guys made that possible for him by you know forcing it to the edge and, and holding their responsibilities. But um, you know we saw it when it happened live. Just him, he came down really fast from that safety spot took him out of what was a potential, you know, uh, area of the field where Piedmont could have gone for it for a fourth down and really, really could have gone for that kill shot as far as time management. Uh, but he blew that up, forced it in the pot, and it, it gave us a little bit of, of, of hope again that we could maybe tie that game up and, and force an overtime or eventually um, score that third touchdown. So, with that being said, I think our LB Realty Group player of the game is going – to Court Pierce, uh, really good, solid, complete game from him on both sides. Um, but with that being said, uh, these games, these 5A games, they're definitely building blocks for what's hopefully to come in later in the season, uh, and that is a great run in district play. Uh, moving on, though, with that, uh, we are going to get to our first United Bank and Mortgage scoreboard update. Um, there were some pretty interesting scores in 4A that have uh, gotten even more interesting as the games has, have gone on. Uh, Carson, I'm, I'm going to leave the floor to you, good sir. Yeah, I was just kind of periodically jumping back and forth, kind of looking looking at that uh, scores on Squirtle. And one that kind of caught my eye was early on, I saw Heritage Hall being up on Clinton. Um, it was like 28 to 7 in the first quarter. Mm -hmm. So, Heritage Hall, they, they looked really sharp against John Marshall last week um, from what little I kind of saw in that game. So I thought it was going to be a repeat of that. But it's showing now that it's a one-score game, 35-34. Um, Heritage Hall is 3A. Um, they'll come up to 4A next year um, with us. But uh, Clinton is a 4A um, opponent that um, if you follow Oklahoma football enough, you know that's always kind of been a traditional powerhouse type, yep. type of almost a blue blood, if you would. Uh, kind of along the likes of, of an Ada and a Jinx and a Union. So um, kind of interesting there seeing that, maybe a potential playoff uh, matchup with them. Um, so you always kind of keep eyes on those other big names in 4A. 
Um, let's see kind of some other ones in our district that we will for sure meet up with. Um, looking down at Newcastle and Plainview. Newcastle's leading at home 28-14 to 14, um, in the third quarter. Uh, let's see for other. Hera looks like they're going to come out on top easily on Western Heights with 46-6 to six score in the fourth quarter. Let's see. Bethany and Woodward. Bethany is still up 26-14 to 14 in the third quarter. Uh, that game is at home for them as well. So not they probably like to not having to travel up almost to near the panhandle. Uh, let's see for other ones in our district. Tuttle and Noble um, looks to be close to the kind of the same score we had earlier, about 35-0 now in the third. Um, if you remember, we guys we played Noble last week, so uh, but you never want to compare two games of course. <laughs> for scores. Of course, um, you know, especially when you add that rivalry aspect to any type of game. Uh, and I think that rounds it out for our district. So other yeah. kind of interesting ones in 4A. Poto and is leading uh, Metro Christian 24 to seven. Uh, let's see, Weatherford El Reno looks to be a really um, probably entertaining game if you're there in person watching it. Weatherford is leading El Reno 22 to 18. Uh, El Reno and Piedmont they played last week had an interesting game. El Reno had actually what I looked like it looked like. Uh, they had been leading Piedmont 6-0 um, mm -hmm. for most of the game leading up to the fourth quarter, and then Piedmont rallied up, got two scores on the board, and, and pulled away with a win 14-6 um, there. Uh, Elgin um, comfortably leading Cash 55-0 in the fourth quarter. Uh, let's see. Let's go to that Wagner Tahlequah, Tahlequah score. Wagner is up 34-13 in the fourth, so um, bearing some type of uh, major fallout. It looks like they're going to um, hold up well there. Um, Verdigris and Katusa. Uh, Katusa leads 27-14. Purgatory on Cushing. Um, last update was an hour ago at a half, um, showing 14-7. So potentially could be different from what we see there. Uh, Ada is up on McAllister, 30-20 um, at half. Um, so that's kind of an interesting game to keep on. McAllister has always kind of been in the mix and, and that 5A dis um, playoff discussion. Uh, Tecumseh and Seminole, that was one of our um, district matchups I missed earlier. Um, Tecumseh is leading 15-8 to eight in the third quarter. Awesome. And we just, might peek just, at some. We'll peek at yeah. the Backyard Bowl real quick. <laughs> yeah, 6 yeah. A. Um, let's see. Okay, Union's kind of made their way back into it, but Jinx is still holding strong with a 28-21 lead, and Bixby is still – Probably gonna win and <laughs> undefeated it by a, six, a comfortable one, seven, margin. Seven score there. That was your uh, First United Bank and Mortgage scoreboard update for the full game. Uh, as for us here in the booth, that is Carson Craig filling in for Todd Lisenby this week. Uh, given the right circumstances, you're going to be hearing Carson a couple more times this season. I can't quite remember which games, but we're gonna get those. Uh, details sorted out here soon but for both of us in the booth for Ashley Robertson and the great Nate the awesome travel crew that um, does everything behind the scenes for us they're the real superstars we just kind of get to tell the story um, I am Drake that is Carson Piedmont beats Blanchard 21 to 7 uh, here in non-district play one more non-district game to go that will happen next week at Blanchard versus Shawnee that game will kick off at 7 p.m. Todd Lizenby will be back in the booth with myself on color thank you all for listening on Squirtle TV and on Classic Rock 104.5 but for us tonight this is a do you are listening to Blanchard Lions football right here on Classic Rock 104.5